Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use smart objects in Adobe Photoshop. First off, let's go ahead and create a new document. I'm going to go new file. For this, I'm going to use the dimensions of 7200 pixels by 7200 pixels. Resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color and then background content set to transparent. Uh, this is the size I typically design in when creating patterns. We'll go ahead and click on create. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and start with a shape. I'm going to use one of Photoshop's predefined shapes here. So I'm just going to right click on the shape tool here and then let's go to our custom shape tool. Here from the drop down, I am going to navigate to legacy shapes and more. These are the shapes that come with Photoshop. If for some reason you do not see this, go ahead and click on this gear icon and you want to click on append default shapes and it will load these shapes into Photoshop for you. So we'll go to our legacy default shapes. I'm going to go to all legacy default shapes and then just scrolling down, I'm going to go to shapes. And for this, let's go ahead and use our heart shape. We'll just click and draw it out here on the canvas. And then I'm just going to give it a black color because I like working with black when creating my patterns. And then let's just go ahead and align it to our canvas, accessing the align tools here in the top toolbar. You'll notice that everything is grayed out and you just need to change the align to from selection to canvas. And then it will give you these options to um, center it both vertically and horizontally. So there are a couple of reasons of why you would want to turn something into a smart object. In this case, I am going to duplicate this shape multiple times on my canvas. And if I want to be able to edit this shape again, um, then I want to make sure I convert this to a smart object. Smart objects are also good when working with images and work with what's called non-destructive editing. You can preserve your image within a smart object, but you can then make edits to that object. So to create the smart object, you are going to right click, click on convert to smart object. And you can tell something is a smart object because it has this file um, image here in the thumbnail. And so if we double click, it will open the smart object here in a new tab. And so the way smart objects work is they are, it's like a file within a file. So now we have this file here that we can edit or make changes to, and then it will be reflected in this document here. Uh, so like I said, one of the reasons to make something a smart object is if you are going to um, then duplicate that object. So we're going to make a couple duplicates up here. So I'm going to right click duplicate this layer. You can always rename it. And then let's go ahead and move this. So I'm going to zoom out command or control with the minus key here. Let's access our move tool here. So we're selected here. And then I'm going to go to edit free transform. And this will just bring up these um, values here at the top. And I want to position it in this top left corner. So I'm just going to go zero for my X value, zero for my Y value. And so we have it here in the corner. So let's go ahead and bring up our pattern preview tool. So I'm going to go to view pattern preview. And with this tool is it will cause it to repeat in the other corners. That way we could save this as a pattern. Uh, to save it as a pattern, you're going to go to edit, define pattern. Here you can give it a name. And then here in my patterns panel, we can see that our newly saved pattern. If you do not see your patterns panel, just go ahead and open it from windows, selecting patterns here. And so now this is where the uh, power of the smart object comes in. So if we jump back into our smart object here, let's go ahead and turn off the visibility there. And then let's just bring a circle shape here. Just hold down shift and just draw this out. And then we'll go ahead and align it. And then let's go ahead and save this. So you can go to file, save. And then we'll go into our document here and we can see that with that smart object that we updated it is now updated both of the instances of that shape. So that's what makes smart objects really helpful is it allows you 
to edit, go back and edit that shape if you need to, and it will be reflected in the various instances of that smart object. Okay, say we want to add dots to these edges here, but we want them to be a different color. Uh, one way to do that would be to take our smart object here. We still want to have the same um, shape with it, but we just want to color it differently. So let's go ahead and right click. Um, one option that you can do is you can do this new smart object by a copy. So it will create a copy, but now it's its own new smart object. So if we go ahead and double click into this one here and let's give this a color, let's go ahead and give it a pink color here. I'm going to go ahead and save this. The keyboard shortcut for saving this is Command or Control with the S key. And then you can always close it, Command or Control W to get out of that smart object. And so let's go ahead and access our Move tool and we can position it up here on our canvas. And then let's go ahead and copy this, right click, duplicate layer. And then I'm going to use that free transform tool again, edit free transform and then just ex entering my details here we're, we're going to go here in this um, side so we're going to go x is zero and then we want it to be uh, midway down so in that case that is 3600 pixels for our document clicking on ok and we can see that we have our um, multicolor multicolor pattern here which we can now save so let's go ahead and just click on this plus icon in our patterns panel and we can see that we've saved our pattern here a couple things to note about working with smart objects so let's take this one for example for this object we can say we resize this down I'm holding the shift and option key and just making it smaller here you can make individual edits to um, the smart object and in this case if we bring back our heart we'll go ahead and save this command or control s to save it it will update it um, in our document here but we still have that um, transformation made to this individual instance Another thing you can do with smart objects, if you just right click here, you can convert to layers. And what you'll notice here, in this case, we made a transformation to our smart object. We made it smaller, but when we convert it to layers, um, what, smart, what Photoshop is telling us is that it won't be retained. So if we just click on OK, we'll see that this is now um, a layer. It's no longer a smart object. Um, but when you do that, you lose any of the transformations that you have made to that smart object. So that's just something to be aware of. We'll go ahead and undo that command or control Z. Okay. And then another thing I want to talk about smart objects um, when we jump back into our heart document is um, it will originally save it the size of your object. But if you, in this case, if I wanted to make this heart bigger, you can easily um, adjust your canvas here. So if you just go to image, canvas size, say I make this 5,000 by 5,000, you can easily adjust the canvas size after the fact. And so we can scale this up holding the shift and option key. Say we want our heart a little bit bigger. We can do that. Let's go ahead and save that command or control S to save it. And then we'll check it here. We have our bigger heart. Just to show you an example of one of the ways that I use um, smart objects for my um, creating my digital paper pack listings um, as you can see with this document I have a number of artboards here if we zoom in here we have it in a square ratio that I can use with Etsy and then I have ones um, for creative fabrica and then I've also created ones for Pinterest here and so um, what's nice about smart objects is in this case if I so if we take this for example here I've got this smart object layer if I double click and then I will just click on a different pattern and then I save this command or control s to save it 
And then if I go back into my listing document here, we can see that it's been updated. It's been updated here. And then if I zoom out, it's been updated, updated. It's just been updated throughout this document. So, so by setting up this document using um, smart objects, it offers a quick way to create these listing images for the different sizes, for Pinterest, for Instagram, for whatever platform you need to create it for. So by setting up the document with smart objects, you can easily create graphics like this quickly. So I just wanted to show you an example of one of the ways that I have used smart objects um, in my business to help create listing images for my digital paper packs. Thank you for watching this video on how to use smart objects in Photoshop. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.